If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Emrakul, the promised end. What is this monstrosity? I can't quite tell if this is Lovecraftian, or if this is more Battle for Zendikar Eldrazi. I don't know, is this actually a horror from worlds outside of our own? Incomprehensible? Or is this just another giant monster that everyone has to go and kill? Beyond flavor, I actually kind of like this card. I really like it in the context of Standard, and I'll be brewing with Emrakul, absolutely. It's a, it's a powerful card, to be sure. The question for me is, is this powerful enough that you would play it over, say, Ulamog, or Kozilek, or Tarka in the right colors? And I'm actually not sure about that. Here's why. As of the time that I'm recording this, so far we don't have any tribals in Standard. And so, your creature types, or rather your card types, are Artifact, Creature, Enchantment, Instant, Land, Planeswalker, Sorcery. Seven. Emrakul starts out costing 13, which, by the way, also power and toughness, 13. If you love Triskaid Echophobia, you might like this card. But in any case, that means that at best you're going to get this down to 6 mana. Realistically, though, usually about 8 to 10, somewhere in that ballpark, somewhere in that range. And if that's the case, generally speaking, are you going to be able to cast this? If you are, then for that mana, are you going to get enough out of it to have Emrakul instead of, say, Ulamog? Now I say, are you actually going to cast this? That is a real question. The way that I see it, there are three main shells that one would put an Emrakul into. The first is Ramp. Obviously we see lots of Ramp decks nowadays. Ramp isn't as good as it used to be back in the first days of Emrakul, back when the deck essentially could be Ramp into Primeval Titan, which will ramp you the rest of the way on its own. Nowadays, the decks have a lot more air in them, if you will. It's much easier to hit lands and ramp spells and nothing else, but when you hit your bombs, that's when you can start to go crazy. Your Chandras, your Ulamogs, your Dragonlord Atarkas, whatever the case may be. Does Emrakul fit in that kind of deck? Well, maybe. You can get a lot of mana in that, but unfortunately, in this kind of deck, you may not be filling your graveyard that quickly, at least not with different card types. And so, while you are getting a lot of lands out, you may not actually be getting Emrakul down, uh, you may not be getting as much of a discount each time. Now, that being said, I think that in that deck, Chandra, Ulamog, Kozilek, Atarka, those do much better than this Emrakul. But the next one has me excited, Nahiri. A Nahiri deck involves using the ult of Nahiri, often ending up taking her out, but that's fine, that's actually fine in this case, to bring out your giant creature, and then swing with it and it comes back to hand. Well, we want to be able to do that with Eldrazi, for a number of reasons. Firstly, when they swing, they do big things, right? In the case of Emrakul, it's kind of just a flying 13-13 trample Sort of a fireball, if you will, where x equals 13. And that's fine if that's what you're after, yeah? Um, not because these Eldrazi get their abilities when they are cast, or their uh, triggered abilities when they're cast, not when they enter, none of the Eldrazi do anything terribly insane on the first go-around. But that's the trick, because you can return them back to hand. In fact, you must return them to hand with Nahiri's ult. With Ulamog, you're still going to have to pay. With Kozilek, you're still going to have to pay. With Emrakul, the amount that you end up paying, if any deck can get you all the way down to 6 for Emrakul, it would be a Nahiri deck. You're discarding as part of Nahiri's plus, and when Nahiri ults and drops herself into the graveyard, that's a Planeswalker for you. 
Now granted, especially in the Naya builds, well, it would have to be Naya, Naya or Four Color, Dragon Lord Atarka is still better, it's an Enter the Battlefield ability, and so you get it on the first time around. But maybe Imrakul deserves to be in the deck as well, because... Mm, because you can get her down cheaply enough, perhaps. I'm brainstorming, this is just off the top of my head. Having not seen the rest of the set, I want to be a little bit cautious, but if you can get Imrakul down to 6 or 7 mana and Atarka is still more expensive than that, maybe you get some use out of it. But in any case, Flying, Trample, bounces back to hand, and then sort of mind slavers your opponent? See, that's just it. When you bring Imrakul back, you get to halfway mind slaver your opponent. It's a common misreading of the text that you take their turn and then you get a turn after that. The way that it, I, it's sequenced is you take your turn, the turn on which you cast the Emrakul, then you take your opponent's turn, and then they take a turn, and then you take a turn. And it proceeds from there as normal. With the exception of Stasis Snare, there's nothing that your opponent can really do, at least not as far as I can remember. No creatures with Flash that would get the job done here that I can think of anyway. That can take out Emrakul on the turn that it's cast. It can be countered, that's fine. You'll still get the cast trigger, of course, and take their turn thereafter. That being the case, outside of Stasis Snare, the fact that Emrakul has protection from instance means that when you cast her, I say her, I've heard her before, it, I'm going to say it, because it's an Eldrazi, what, what are you going to do? Anyway. The fact that it has protection from instance means they're not going to be able to deal with it on the turn that you cast it, and then you take their next turn to get rid of their sorcery speed removal. Of course they can top deck more removal, obviously, that's fair. There's not much you can do about that, but then there wasn't much you are going to be able to do about that anyway. Make them use as much as many cards out of their hand as possible. Run their biggest dudes into your Emrakul, use their spot removal to take out the rest, however you so choose to do it. But importantly, it doesn't really matter if you try to tap your opponent out because they're getting the turn thereafter, not you. You can just for style points, you can just for lols, that's something I might end up doing. But otherwise, it doesn't really do you any good. So we've discussed using Emrakul in Ramp. We've discussed Nahiri. The next one I'd like to talk about is Reanimator. Now right now, there aren't very many good Reanimator spells in Standard. It's true that you have, for instance, Ojutai's Command, which only cares about CMC 2 or less. There is that one dragon from Khans of Tarkir that cares about CMC 3 or less, and gives it haste, I think returns it to hand, Rakdos colored, whatever it's called. I think it's about six mana. Never actually seen that in a sanctioned game, outside of limited. Never seen it in a constructed game. So anyway, it was an uncommon, whatever it was. Outside of that, you have, as far as I can remember, just two. There's the six mana Ever After, which reanimates two creatures that you control or two creatures in your graveyard, I should say. And that's fine. If you're just doing something like that, it's not insane. I'm pulling it up right now. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Each of those creatures is a black zombie, in addition to its other colors and types. Put Ever After on the bottom of its owner's library. Obviously to keep you from abusing that. Two creatures. Emrakul and whatever else you'd like. Another Eldrazi, an Atarka, another Dragon Lord. You're playing black now. You can use Silumgar. I guess you could if you really wanted to. You could use Kolagon. I'm not as big a fan, but whatever, for whatever that's worth. And then the next one is five mana. Let me pull that up right away. I think it's called Necromantic Summons. Ah, there we are, indeed. Five mana, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And with Spell Mastery, that creature comes in with two plus one plus one counters. 
Seems fair, right? Now we have a 1515 <laughs> flying trample protection from instance. I've been talking about using Emrakul in standard. I don't really think that this card has any ability to be played outside of standard. And that's because Emrakul, none of the Eldrazi, none of the newer, well, maybe Ulamog, maybe, are more powerful than their counterparts. Emrakul certainly is not. But that's sort of intentional. See, there's a bit of a design trade-off here. We're going to lower the power level, or do something about the cost, etc., in exchange for giving you the ability to reanimate them. And indeed, you'll notice that none of the new Eldrazi have anti-reanimation clauses. They're not like the old Eldrazi, the Rise Eldrazi, where they can come back from your graveyard. Well, they take the whole graveyard with them, actually. They're not going to pull a Blightsteel Colossus, Progenitus, nothing like that. They stay there. And that means that you can reanimate them. So yes, people complain about them not being as strong, and that's true. This does give you another avenue. Now, outside of standard, why would you bring back an Emrakul? There are stronger options, right? Or this Emrakul, anyway. But in standard, the Eldrazi and the Dragon Lords, at least for right now, those are where it's at. So if you're going to play a Reanimator control deck, I guess maybe some sort of reanimator combo deck, although with your spells being 5 and 6 mana, I'm not sure you'd call it a combo deck, right? Ramp into dredging yourself and then reanimate. That seems super clunky for this standard. But in any case, that is something that perhaps you can do. Alright. And that's it. Those are my thoughts on it right now, without knowing anything else about the set as a whole. Sans this, I will say. Notice that the collector number on this Emrakul is 6. That means that there are 5 colorless non-artifacts before this card. That's kind of cool, I think. At least, if they keep with the same conventions, as they should, as we imagine. What does that mean? Does that mean we'll be getting even more Eldrazi? In all likelihood, yes. Does that mean that we'll get... Tribal? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can get Emrakul down to five, because they'll have some Tribals in there. I doubt it, but Delirium is a mechanic in the format. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they could. It's in the same block as Delirium, even. Um, more likely, just more, say, Scion Generators, Emrakul's Brood starts coming in. Something like that, I imagine, would be more than reasonable. But we'll have to see. Or if I got this upload up late, you have already seen. In any case, that's it for right now. T1 Glistener Elf, signing off. I will see you later, I will play with this card, and I'll show you a brew with it before too long. I'm actually really excited to get this one tried out, you know. Alright, in the meantime though, gotta get to work, bye bye.